Good evening. Seek the wisdom of the ages, but look at the world through the eyes of a child. Welcome to BMC News Live in English, brought to you by Al Hilal Hospital and Medical Centers. I am Virat Narayan, joining you with the daily news updates. Today's headlines. Pope thanked to His Majesty in Vatican prayers and praised Bahrain's preparations for visit. Bahrain 404 Dialogue sends peace message to the world. Southern Governor Chaired Security Committee Potentially lethal new super chain of COVID created in Lenten Lab Three tragedies in Asia took hundreds of lives in one month News in detail Pope thanked His Majesty in Vatican prayers and praise to Bahrain's preparations for visit his Holiness, Pope Francis has thanked His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the visit he will be making to Bahrain on November 3rd to 6th and all those who made it possible. Tomorrow the people, tomorrow the Pope will leave on an apostolic visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain where he will stay until Sunday. He spoke to the people gathered in St. Peter's Square for the Angelus of Saint All Saints. He greeted and thanked the King, the authorities, the brothers and sisters in faith and all the people of the country, especially those who have been working for a long time in the preparation for this visit. The Pope said that the 39th Apostolic journey which will take him to Bahrain would be a journey under the sign of dialogue in that he would take part in a forum centered on the necessity for East and West to meet more closely for human coexistence. Bahrain 404 Dialogue sends peace message to the world. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's rule in supporting peaceful coexistence, tolerance, and acceptance of others has been hailed. His Majesty the King's approach aims to achieve security, stability, and promote constructive human cooperation in the world, said King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence Board of Trustees Chairman Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. He said that the hosting of the Bahrain Forum East-West Dialogue for Human Coexistence reflects Bahrain's role in serving humanity as a model of tolerance and coexistence, he said. The forum will be held under the aegis of His Majesty the King, coinciding with the historical official visit of His Holiness, Pope Francis' visit to Bahrain at the invitation of His Majesty the King. The event will be attended by al Asr Grand Imam, Muslim Council of Elders Chairman, His Eminence, Dr. Ahmed al Taib, in the presence of other key religious leaders. Imam of al Hasr and Pope Francis' co-chair Muslim Elders Council meeting in Bahrain. Bahrain hosts on November 4th and 16th meeting of Muslim Council of Elders coinciding with the historical official visit of His Holiness Pope Francis' visit to Bahrain at the invitation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The meeting will be chaired by His Eminence Grand Imam Sheikh of Al Asr, Dr. Ahmad Al Taib, in the presence of His Holiness Pope Francis. The meeting will review global challenges including climate changes, lack of food and water, and other humanitarian catastrophes and the role of religious leaders in addressing them through an Islamic Christian dialogue. The Secretary General of the Council of Muslim Elders and the Higher Committee for Human Fraternity Councillor Muhammad Abdul Salam stressed that the meeting symbolizes the relationship between leaders and followers of different religions by providing practical steps and solutions to these challenges from religious and legal perspectives. Efforts to achieve food security to continue, Deputy Premier stated, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure Sheikh Khalid bin Abdul Al Khalifa has asserted that efforts will continue to achieve advanced levels of sustainable food security to ensure the sufficiency of local food products and meet the consumer's needs, which will raise the rate of food security in line with the goals of the Comprehensive Development March, spearheaded by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Deputy Prime Minister affirmed that all the initiatives launched by the government, led by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister focus on supporting local production in all sectors that achieve food security in a way that contributes to reduce dependence on food imported from abroad to meet local food needs by enabling the private sector to play its role in this regard in partnership with the public sector. Labour Ministry issued edict assigning some of LMRA tasks to manpower registration centres. In implementation of the order of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the Labour Market Regulatory Authority to cancel the flexible work permit and register all expatriate workers in partnership with the private sector. 
Labor Minister Jamil bin Muhammad Ali Humaydan, the LMRA chairman, issued Edict 1 of 2022 regarding assigning some of the tasks of LMRA to the manpower registration centers. The Labor Minister stressed that the Edict to assign some tasks to the labor registration centers for workers wishing to apply for a permit to practice professional activities is part of the measures taken by LMRA to implement the directives in partnership with the private sector, intensify inspection campaigns, tighten dealing with the violators, link professional work license to standards and qualifications, provide the appropriate environment for workers that takes into account the rights and the effectiveness of their role in economic development. Southern Governor Chaired Security Committee Southern Governor His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa chaired the Security Committee in the presence of Deputy Governor Brigadier Isa Tamir Al Dusri and other officers and officials. He stressed the committee's role in implementing the directives of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to meet citizens' needs in order to bolster security and stability in the Southern Governorate. He praised the efforts undertaken by the security agencies across various areas noting cooperation with the Southern Governor to ensure security readiness. His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa followed upon measures which are taken in cooperation with the security authorities, directing to step up initiatives and awareness campaigns. Thagrid's victory in Saudi Olympic and Paralympic Camel Camp reflects development of Bahrain Camel Sport. The representative of His Majesty, the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, his Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed happiness over the victory of Tigrid Camel, which is owned by him in the Saudi Olympic Inch Paralympic Camel Cup. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa praised the achievement, asserting the advanced level of Bahrain Camel sports in foreign competitions. He pointed out the high competitiveness characterizing the championships held in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, loading Tigrids clinching the first place after clocking 4 minutes and 20 seconds. BDF Chief of Staff visited Special Operations Forces Exhibition and Conference 2022. Delegated by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister, Chief of Staff of Bahrain Defence Force, Lieutenant General Daib bin Sakur Al Nuyami, attended the Special Operations Forces Exhibition and Conference, which is being held in the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. The BDF Chief of Staff attended the opening of the conference, which comprised three sessions under the name of Middle East Special Operations Commanders, which aimed to unify concepts and work mechanisms to counter international terrorism. The BDF Chief of Staff toured SOFAX 2022 and was informed about the participating pavilions and sections which showcased the latest international defense systems and military technologies aimed at boosting regional and international security and serving global peace. The BDF Chief of Staff lauded the good organization of the exhibition, which is considered as one of the major fires in the Middle East. Today's COVID Updates COVID Updates brought to you by Al Hilal Hospital and Medical Centers. Now we will be back after a very short break. The branch of Megamart and Macromart supermarkets in Bahrain has opened in Sahala. The best offers are available to the customers at affordable rates. Everyone is welcome. During and around the opening day, a variety of fish including salmon, meat and dairy products, roastery, frozen items, food and non-food items, groceries, fruits and vegetables, electronics, garments and ready-to-eat food items are available to the customers at affordable rates. Hearty welcome to all. Megamart and Macromart, your favorite shopping destination.
the exclusive franchisee of Cochin Kala Bhavan in Bahrain. With over a decade of existence in Bahrain, exclusive online regular classes have started for classical dancers, music vocals, instrumental music, cinematic dance, Kathak, Zumba body fitness, karate and yoga, drawing, arts and craft, children's theater. For more information, please call 3909-6845-3909-4806-3885-2397 or visit www.bahrainmediacity.com Welcome back. Oman unveils host football fan zone for Qatar World Cup. Oman is aiming to make the Qatar World Cup a home win after announcing grand plans for a sprawling football festival to run throughout the showpiece tournament. The Sultanate is set to capitalize on a massive Middle East tourism boom during the event by screening every minute of the drama live at the Oman Convention and Exhibition Center Gardens as part of a drive to draw in traveling supporters. Oman hopes to be an ideal base for the competition, offering short haul flights to the host country as well as bringing a Carnival World Cup and atmosphere to its own streets. Potentially lethal new super strain of COVID created in Lantern Lab. Researchers at Imperial College Lantern have hybridized the original Wuhan strain of the disease with both the Omicron and Delta variants separately. The college is yet to reveal how effective the strain they have created is and has denied that the work constitutes gain of function, the process now widely believed to have been responsible for the original strain in Wuhan. Molecular biology expert Dr. Richard Ebright warned that the new muted strain which was injected into hamsters in London is insanity both in terms of the redundancy and waste, and that it has zero foreseeable practical applications. Dr. Ebright further warned that the development is huge, especially in terms of the risk of triggering a new pandemic wave upon accidental or deliberate release of the laboratory-generated viruses. The development comes after Boston University created a new strain with 80% kill rate in a similar fashion. A former director of the Israeli Government Institute for Biological Research described the research as playing with fire. China-based researchers developed rapid testing methods for monkeypox virus. A group of China-based researchers have recently developed three rapid testing methods for monkeypox virus that can provide the result in 20 to 30 minutes and are significantly faster than the traditional quantitative real-time PCR method. Quantitative real-time PCR is currently the gold standard for diagnostics, but it requires trained laboratory personnel and specialized equipment, and results can only be obtained after several hours. Three tragedies in Asia took hundreds of lives in one month. More than 400 people died in October in a series of crowd-related disasters in Asia when a bridge packed with travelers collapsed in India. Halloween parties were crushed in South Korea's capital, and spectators fled a stadium in Indonesia after police fired tear gas. The dynamics in the three situations were distinct. Though experts say poor planning each crowd management contributed to the disasters in Indonesia and South Korea. In India, authorities are investigating whether the recently repaired bridge was properly inspected. According to the Associated Press, in Seoul, 156 people died when more than 100,000 flocked to the popular nightlife district of Itaewon on Saturday for Halloween celebrations, the first since the country's strict COVID-19 restrictions were lifted. The narrow sloping alleys of the district became clogged with people, leading to what experts call crowd turbulence. That's when people are so packed together and they don't have full control over their movements. 
and the count moves as a continuous body. After the weekend collapse of a newly repaired suspension bridge in India's Gujarat state in which 134 people died, authorities have announced the arrest of nine people, including managers of the bridge's operator. The 143-year-old bridge reopened four days before Sunday's collapse under the weight of hundreds of people. A security video of the disaster showed it shaking violently. And people trying to hold on its cables and metal fencing before the aluminium walkway gave out and crashed into the river. With that, we come to the end of today's news. Stay tuned for daily news updates in BMC News Live English at 7.30 p.m. every day. I have been Uthnar and I'm signing up from BMC News Live. Good night.